What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for the reaction. Today's a great, wonderful, beautiful day because it's a Sweden day. Inside the lives of the Swedish royal family. I'm not gonna lie guys, I kinda didn't know you still had a royal family. I didn't, I, I don't know. It's a shame because I would like to know a little bit more about your royal family. So without further ado, Let's get into this reaction, let's go. It may be shocking to learn that there are royals just as interesting as the British royal family. Though they may not get as much airtime as their British counterparts, the Swedish royal family is certainly worthy of the spotlight. From scandals and affairs to royal weddings and babies, they sure know how to keep the tabloid headlines interesting. Oh. So what's up with this gorgeous royal family you know nothing about? Well, Can I just say, your royal family is a lot more attractive than our royal family. <laughs> wow, beautiful, handsome, all of them are really good looking. Not saying our royal family is not good looking, but I think, I think you're a little bit more attractive. Well, you've come to the right place not because that, we are going to take matters. you back to where it all started. Then we will see what the Swedish royals... Okay. Wow, okay. So this is the royal family. So this is this the king, and this is that's is that the queen, um, and is this like William and Kate, <laughs> and this is Harry and Meghan. <laughs> um, interesting. Very handsome family. He looks like an actor. Look at him. Anyways, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really good looking family royals are up to today. To truly understand the Swedish royal family, you have to start from the beginning. The current ruling family stems from a family tree that was established in 1763. That's when right. King Carl XIV Johan, or his real name Jean-Baptiste Bernadette, was born. This is where it gets a little confusing. Jean-Baptiste Bernadette didn't become King Carl XIV Johan until many years later in 1818. And you might be surprised to learn he was actually French. The first king of Sweden, at least in the most current family, received his crown thanks to his military career career and the French Revolution. It also helped that when he was elected king, that's right, he was actually elected, that he had a son that would replace him after his passing. So when he passed okay. away at the age of 81 due to a stroke, his son Oscar was there to take over. Okay, we don't want to bore you with the rest of the family history, we just think it's important to know that the current ruling family is of French descent and have a relatively modern family tree, especially when you- Do you know what? I can see that. It says they have a French descent. They all very dark haired people, not like typical what you would stereotypically see as Swedish. I'm not saying I'm sure there's loads of Swedish people that also have dark hair. However, you'd think as a um, royal family, they'll be like purebred Swedish. However, actually, that thinking isn't 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 conducive of a, a, a rational thought because the royal families of all the countries they intermingled and interbred with different uh countries and used to intermarry right so like french royalty used to marry british royalty british royalty would marry german royalty and all that type of stuff so i'm sure there's been a lot of mixing in the royal families in uh, Sweden. When you compare them to the British royal family. Now, let's get to the present Swedish royal family, shall we? King Carl the 16th Gustav rules the ah, current group of royals gallivanting around Sweden. Let's just say, if you have any clue about Prince Philip's and Prince Charles' infidelities, they don't even compare to what's been said about King Carl the 16th Gustav. His life story has a oh. tragic beginning. When he was just nine months old, his father passed away in a plane crash, which meant oh, he no. was the next in line for the throne after his grandfather. This was something that loomed over the young prince his whole life. Could you imagine knowing at the age of five that you are one step away from ruling a country? And as it panned wow. out, that's precisely what happened in 1973 when he inherited the crown from his grandfather. Thankfully, he was well into his 20s at that point. Throughout his life, it was apparent that King Carl was a reluctant heir to the crown. It was also even more clear that the people in Sweden didn't really respect him. There were stories of him partying really? and running around like a crazy bachelor. That all seemingly stopped in 1972 when he met his now wife, Queen Sylvia, at the Summer Olympics. She was the first Swedish queen to ever have a real career before becoming a royal. In other words, she oh. was a commoner. One of the craziest things... <laughs> 
Well, she was a commoner, okay. What's about this notion is that King Carl's three older sisters lost their royal status when they married commoners. And if the current laws were established right. back in 1973, King Carl the 16th wouldn't even be king, which may have something to do with why he changed the law in the first place. In the years since being crowned the King of Sweden, King Carl the 16th has been rattled with scandal and praise. For one, he got rid of the rule that the first male born to the king and queen would be next in line for the throne. In Let's move on. Oh, wait, what? For one, he got rid of the rule that the first male born to the king and queen would be next in line for the throne. Instead, okay. it would go to the first born child. The rule That's changed good. all the way back in 1980. That's really good. Equality, we want to see it, we love to see it. It shouldn't be, well, and in the British royal family, I don't know how long that's been the case. I think it's been the case in the British royal family for centuries, right? We've had loads of queens firstborn as I think I don't know maybe I'm wrong but I always felt like it's always been the case that the firstborn regardless of the gender was the next in line to the throne in the British royal family I don't know but I'm glad he changed that because that's right should be the first in line which meant the girl. couple's daughter, Princess Victoria, would take the crown after her father. King Carl the 16th also banned the law that royal family members lost their titles if they married commoners, which all his children did, along with his sisters, as wow. we mentioned earlier. So it would seem like he was a pretty progressive king, but that doesn't mean it's been a fairy tale for this family. Back in 2010, a shocking book made headlines that claimed the king had multiple affairs in the 90s. He was linked to adult entertainers in Atlanta during the Summer wow. Olympics, and there was another rumor that he he had several relationships with young women, promising to support them and further their careers. When asked to mm -mm. comment about her husband's transgressions, Queen Sylvia had nothing to say. But that could be because she has a pretty shocking past as well. In the same year that the book spoke of her husband's affairs, a documentary shed light on the Queen's family history. According to the program, Queen Sylvia's father was a part of a controversial German World War II political party. You can probably oh. guess which one we are talking about. The Queen oh. is of German descent, but was raised in Brazil. Her family moved back to Germany in 1930 and made a fortune thanks to the war. The Queen. Right, so she's of German descent, but she was raised in Brazil. And she has links to... Oh, oh, oh. And do you know what's funny? I watched a documentary the other day. I think it was on YouTube. If I, yeah, I watched a documentary that basically said uh, during the war, or after the war, a lot of people, a lot of German Nazis fled to Brazil. And there's a part of Brazil where literally there's a whole neighborhood and they're all descendant from Nazis. So it would line up to the fact that she is German. A lot of the high-ranking Nazis as well went to Brazil. Hmm. Controversy. The Queen has spoken about this before, saying her father only joined the party to keep them out of trouble. She claimed she didn't line up with their political beliefs. She also didn't make any more comments, but did seem to regret his affiliation with the party. In fact, she didn't even know anything about it until she was older, and she never was able to confront her father about this controversial past. Now that we've learned all about their parents, let's take a look at the next generation mm. to take the throne in Sweden. First, Can I just say, um... <laughs> your royal family yes there's controversy but there's controversy in all families and also <laughs> the british royal family is unreal when it comes to like it's, it's it's the most messed up family in the world like there's so much so so much drama so like i'm not surprised in all families but a family that's like in the spotlight and everyone can see every detail of their lives like i'm not surprised as issues because they have to be the perfect family and if we're being realistic like no family's perfect so i do feel sorry for royal families sometimes even though they're like a privileged rich wealthy family they do have their lives under microscopic scope <laughs> so First, we'll start with the lady in line for the crown, Crown Princess Victoria. Though her parents have caused quite a stir over the years, Crown Princess Victoria seems to be a fan favorite. Thanks to the law passed oh. by her father, she will take over the crown when he decides to step down or That's passes good. away. She gave her first public speech at the tender age of 18, and ever since, Swedish people can't get enough of her. She has openly discussed the pressure to be perfect and how she once battled an eating disorder. There is something very relatable about Crown Princess Victoria. Sure, she went to Yale and is in fact 
lacks Swedish royalty, but she's dealt with issues like dyslexia that you don't always associate with royalty. And there's the fact that she's also got herself a relatively normal husband, Daniel Westling. The pair started okay. dating all the way back in 2002 when he was a personal trainer at a gym in Stockholm. Could you imagine the shock? It was speculated that her father wasn't a fan and the tabloids ripped him to shreds any chance they could. Just wow, he's, he's a person. He was a personal trainer and now he's marrying the crown princess. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, mm. Like that, the couple powered through and ended up marrying in 2010. That mm. night, Daniel Westling graduated to Prince Daniel. Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel wow. weren't the only royal couple to rock the boat with their relationship. Back when he was one of Sweden's most eligible bachelors, Prince Carl Philip, the middle child of the king and queen, was also making headlines. After ending a long-term relationship, he fell into the arms of an ex-model turned yoga instructor, Sophia Helkvist. Okay. She also happened to be a reality TV star as well but the most scandalous event from her past involved oh a topless photo and a python we will okay so you know what it is when they talk about harry and megan and like her being like this this uh tv show star it's quite normal for royal families to get in with like celebrities i mean arguably she's a bit more revealing in her career than megan is so um, it's interesting to see. I didn't know this about the Swedish royal family. Good on him. If he falls in love with someone, if you love someone, regardless of their past, regardless of what they do, it should, it should really be nobody's business. You know, like, I don't know. I just feel like good on him for just marrying who he loves rather than pandering to the Swedish nation or the government or whoever it is that says the royal family have to marry who and such and such or his dad or parents like marry who you love guys we will just let you imagine that one but needless to say it didn't go over well with the Swedish people and once again another royal relationship was tested though she had all the wow. makings of stirring up the royal court Princess Sophia was actually welcomed with open arms according to the crown princess she and Princess Sophia are the best of friends and now that they are giving Kate and Meghan a run for their money it's easy to see why they are always seen together and they are impeccably chic that could be why when Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia became husband and wife in 2015 there were no protests Tests. Plus, they both looked utterly gorgeous. Anyone else having wedding? Uh, I mean, this is what makes me that that I'm so happy that they get along. That's that's kind of the example that Megan and Kate should have should have set. That's Megan and Kate should have been like this. However, they hate each other. <laughs> they hate each other. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, this is really good. It's good when the family gets along. It's very hard when you have in-laws or people that enter the family and you don't get along with that person. It, it causes friction. It causes, it causes issues. And you don't want that. You want harmo harmonious families with everyone getting along. That's what you want wedding envy. The youngest of the king and queen's children is Princess Madeline. While her brother and sister were falling in love and keeping love, this princess was having a rough time. She and her long-term boyfriend were engaged in 2009, but that didn't last long. By early oh. 2010, the wedding was called off because her prince-to-be cheated on her during a ski trip. Ouch. Imagine wow. being a princess and getting cheated on. Like, did he actually think he was going to get away with it? Sadly, he she had to pack the up princess. the princesses in the public's eye, which was probably humiliating. Thankfully, all was not lost for this gorgeous princess. She needed a change in scenery, and after the heartbreaking scandal, she promptly moved to New York to start a new life. While in wow. New York, it didn't take long for her to find a new beau. That's where Christopher O'Neill enters the scene. Christopher is a British-American businessman, and surprisingly, unlike her okay. siblings, didn't cause much controversy when the pair started dating. And no one was shocked when they tied the knot in 2013. But what was surprising was the fact that Christopher decided not to become a prince. He didn't want to give up his citizenship, nor was he interested in leaving his job. It did take a while to move wow. to Sweden, but according to Christopher, he would do anything to be home with his family. That'd be Interesting. I quite like Christopher. Christopher said, uh, yeah, I'm not bothered about a royal title. Um, I don't want to give up my citizenship in the countries that I'm from. So he's British American. So is he British? And does, he have, does he have dual citizenships with Britain and America? Um, good on you, Christopher. He didn't want to give up his, his uh, nationality for anyone. Um, I think that's good. I think, wow, well done.
Yeah. He definitely didn't marry her to be a, a, a royal prince, did he? That being said, they still have plans of moving to London, one day at least. London. So now that all the royal children are settled down, you can only imagine what the new generation of royals is like. That's right, this family has grown and the third generation is young and vibrant. First we have Crown Princess Victoria's children. Since they are next in line for the throne, they play a huge role in the royal family. In 2012, Good. Princess Estelle was born and became another female first child to be heir to the throne. Then her nice. baby brother, Prince Oscar, was born in 2016. While he may never become king, King, he's become the king of the Swedish people's hearts. Look how adorable he is. Next, uh. let's take a look at the kids who call Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia mom and dad. They welcomed their first bundle of joy, Prince Alexander, in 2016. And not... What a gorgeous family. They are such a... Go look at the... Yeah, mom and Fair dad. Enough. They welcomed their first... They are like picture-perfect family. How cute is the little kid? Oh, their kid is so cute. And the parents are so attracted that they, that is like, ha ha, beautiful family. <laughs> their first bundle of joy, Prince Alexander in 2016. And not to be outdone by his older sister, the couple had a second son, Prince Gabriel, in August of 2018. Okay. Considering she's pretty much a new mom all over again, we aren't sure if this is where the baby making stops. For They're all quite similar age to our crown prince and princess and the brothers and sisters and their children they're all quite similar i wonder are they related to the british royal family like distantly These i wonder two, if they are but they sure do make a cute family finally we have the youngest sister princess madeline and her little ones her first child princess leonore in 2014 and just like her sister-in-law princess sophia she too welcomed a baby in 2018 though she beat princess uh. sophia by two months by delivering prince nicholas in june again now that she's a new mom who knows how many more kids she and christopher will be up for but for now the king and queen officially have six grandbabies when they aren't wow. chasing their young children around the palace the royal family is attending several events from the Queen's 75th birthday party to watching Princess Leonore in the Nutcracker. See, they are just like us, which is probably why the Swedish royal family has caused a significant stir on everyone's radars. This wow. family's the perfect replacement if you're getting sick of how untouchable the British royal family seems. At <laughs> least they will keep us entertained until we see Prince Harry and Meghan's little ones. Harry. We've seen them already. Will you take Meghan to be your wife? So, what's next for this exciting family? We are sure there will be more scandals, photo ops, and jet setting. We can be even more confident that the world will start paying closer attention to the Swedish royal family. Considering how much screen time they are getting these days, could we see a reality show in their future? They already have an ex-reality mm. TV star in their ranks. Okay, we are probably getting ahead of ourselves, but we can dream, can't we? Until then, our eyes will be glued to our computer screens to see every move this chic royal family makes. Wow. Interesting. Like, I do not know why. I, I, I know nothing. I knew nothing about your royal family. I, I feel ashamed. <laughs> it's because everyone talks about the British royal family, uh, our late queen who passed away, King Charles who's just been coronated. That's all in the news. Meghan and Harry and their controversies and all that type of stuff. But we never hear about other royal families around the world. And yeah, you guys have a fully fledged big royal family. Um, this told me about the inside of the lives. However, it didn't tell me whether they're working royals and whether they have charitable causes that they work with or organizations they work with. Do they get money from the state? Do you guys um, fund their endeavors through your taxes? Um, I don't know about the details. So I'm gonna have to watch another video on, you know, what what's the function of your royal family? Do they have any power in law? Um, you know, like, let me know. I don't know how powerful your royal family is, how influential they are in your society. Are they just there for decoration? Can you guys visit the palaces? Can you go inside and see their crown jewels? Let me know. Do they have a lot of crown jewels? Let me know in the comment section because I know nothing. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.